On Catalyst next Thursday, if you can tear yourself away from the peak wedding, is a very important feature on peak oil. The news is astounding. Just listen to oil consultant Chris Grabowski in London. The decline is now pretty terrifying. give you an idea, at the moment the global oil supply is losing the equivalent of losing the entire North Sea in about 15 months, or the entire production of Iran, which is OPEC's second biggest producer, in about 11 months. That's hard to even get your head around. It's extremely hard to get your head around. And that shows that the enormity of the challenge of even maintaining supply and with the deep sea oil, there will be delays, obviously, in drilling now. What is it? Is that we're going to sort of intersect the decline? Well, at the moment, the most probable date for the intersection is still 2014. But that depends on OPEC being prepared to use all the spare capacity it's sitting on and all that spare capacity working. If either of those conditions don't happen, then, of course, the date comes back towards you. And if countries elect not to supply, as the perception gets round that this is tight and valuable, it would be fully understandable if sovereign governments started saying, well, we'll look after our folks first and we will export less, and offsetting that with a higher price. Then again, that brings it back towards you. So you're saying that the oil crunch, depending on what OPEC does, could even be sooner than 2014? Yes. What does that mean for a place like Australia that doesn't produce most of its own oil? Well, Australia is well equipped in this sense that you have large coal exports and you have large gas exports. Both those energy forms are going to be in great demand and you're going to be getting a very good price for them, which means you as a country can go into the market and bid quite aggressively for the 40% of oil consumption that you don't produce yourself. So, in that sense, you won't be too badly hit. You will remain the lucky country. OK. <laughs> but we'll be paying a lot more. And what do you think of the IEA's latest projections? Well, right, the IEA in its latest World Energy Outlook has really covered every base. What they seem to have done, because they used three scenarios, is they seem to have ruled out the possibility of business as usual. They feel they can get it to add up with a scenario which involves governments delivering on all their assorted promises, which seems a pretty unlikely outcome. And then they have another scenario, which is the one to, to keep global warming to a minimum, which, again, they appear to be indicating is, is not a very probable outcome, that it just couldn't be done. So, yeah, the, the red lights may not be flashing, but the orange lights are certainly flashing from the IEA. And from sort of private information, we know that they are saying rather more dramatic things behind closed doors to government than they're putting into the public print. So it's one of those reports you have to read with great care and a certain amount of understanding to see what they're really saying as opposed to what they appear to be saying. What do you mean? Well, what I mean is, is you don't have to read too much between the lines to see that what they're saying is that future supply is likely to be difficult. And as they've been steadily revising their demand figures up literally all, all year in their monthly reports, you see, you see already we, we're back to the point where the world is using more oil than it was even in the middle of 2008, the last time we were booming crazily. We're producing more, but only a little bit more. So, you know, already we've caught that up. The, in oil demand terms, you know, the recession is behind us and demand is powering up, driven by the Chinas and the Indias, where their growth is being fuelled by oil. Chris Grabowski, formerly of BP and the Institute of Petroleum in London, now an oil consultant with Jonica Newby of Catalyst, who managed to score an exclusive with the man himself in Paris. Fatih Birol is the chief economist of the International Energy Agency. The news are not very bright. On one hand, we see that the global oil demand will increase substantially, mainly driven by the transportation sector, cars, and also by China as a country. Today, in China, 30 persons out of 1,000 persons own a car, and in the United States, 700 persons out of 1,000 persons own a car. And Chinese, with the increasing income levels, 
they are going to buy cars, which is justified, and uh, therefore the demand for oil will increase substantially. On one hand, we have this pressure on the demand side, but when we look at the production side, the prospects are rather bleak. We think that the crude oil production has already peaked in 2006, but we expect oil to come from the natural gas liquids, type of liquid when we have through the production of gas, and also a bit from the oil sands. But in any case, it will be very challenging to see an increase in the production to meet the growth in the demand. And as a result of that, one of the major conclusions we have from our recent World Energy Outlook is that the age of cheap oil is over. We all have to prepare ourselves as governments, as industry, or as a private car driver for higher oil prices. Do you think governments, including my own, have been in denial on this? I think governments, in general, are not well prepared to the difficulties we are going to face in the oil markets. Because the bulk of the growth is coming from the transportation sector, and if we have to find a solution to the oil problems, we have to find a way to change our mobility habits. The only way I see and it is well documented in our book, is that to move from an oil-based to an electricity-based mobility system, which would lower the oil demand growth and therefore comfort the oil markets. But it will be too optimistic to say that any of the governments, yours or mine, or many of the OECD governments, are ready to face this challenge. How urgent is it? I think the important thing here is the prices. Prices may go up substantially. How uh, much? Today we have uh, about $90, which is still a significant amount of uh, money we are paying. For example, in Europe, we are facing this financial crisis. The amount of increase in the oil import bill in Europe, it is only the increase in the oil import bill in Europe, is equal to the government budget deficit of Greece plus Portugal put together. It's only the increase when we have $90. If it increases further, which we believe will increase, at least 20, 30 percent higher than now in the next few years to come. And this would mean additional pressure on the financing of many governments who are the oil importers. Well, again, how close is that? I mean, how soon might we get that? Increase in the prices? Yeah. It will depend on the economic recovery. If the economy recovery uh, starts to happen sooner rather than later, we can see uh, difficulties in the markets in two, three years' time. And this, in turn, may mean the strangling the economic recovery efforts. Because higher oil prices means putting a pressure on the trade balance, and through that, the economic recovery efforts can be well strangled. So this is a big challenge. Just five years ago, your organization was saying no peak oil in sight and we will get up to 120 million barrels of oil a day by 2030. You've revised those estimates down substantially. Has there been a real change of opinion here? No, what we have done is in the year 2008 we have looked at 800 oil fields on a field-by-field -field basis. It is the most detailed study ever carried out in the world and we have seen that the decline rate the decline in the existing fields are very, very deep. And since four or five years, we are underlining one message, namely the existing fields are declining so sharply that in order to stay where we are in terms of production levels, in the next 25 years, we have to find and develop four new Saudi Arabias. It is a huge, huge challenge that we continue to underline. And on top of that, this would mean that the world's reliance in terms of oil supply on a very few number of countries in the Middle East. So you have both the financial aspect, you have the geological aspect, and you have the geopolitical aspect of the growing reliance on oil.